as you are going to hear. You are angry. You are blood. They are going to have a meeting together. That paralysis. When the actress and the vem are meeting together and I agree, they will let you go tonight. If you believe that, shout a louder, amen. Please. The hour has come. I'd like you to stretch your hands and say, Father, don't pass me by. Show yourself in my life. These two days of encounter, one word from your servant can turn around my story. In the name of Jesus Christ. When we came into this bush, there was shrine. And they were threatening us. I only called him on phone. Say, my friend, stop disturbing my sleep. You know, you know, how many of you know daddy? You are talking what is important. Daddy said, I said, daddy, shrine. They have said that we are going to die. Say, my friend, you are disturbing my sleep. All I know is that that shrine shall bleed. The building will be completed. There will be numerous road network. Things, that place will be converted to a city. Can I have my rest now? <laughs> Go, even at the back, all the roads are all what, tired. And yeah, we are living like abroad. This is the only place that light is constant. This place was a bush. Light is what? Constant in this place. Road is everywhere by just one voice. One voice. One voice. My wife was gone. And I told him, say, kidney has back up. Everything has for He said, bring her. He said, madam, you are too young to think to die. Go look for a better hotel. Lie down and sleep. That was the prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, women, my wife, <laughs> my wife dragged my trousers. He didn't hear you. Tell him. <laughs> I said, I had you. My wife is telling me, tell him my kidney is off. I want doctors say I'm going to die. I said, Daddy, <laughs> your daughter, they say kidney is bad. Say, my friend, look for a very good hotel. Give her a very good sleep. Give her three lakh. Put her in a very good air condition. Buy my spoken word. And the kidney. She went to South Africa the upper week and they did a kidney biopsy. They said kidney is fine. The same people that are saying that kidney is bad. Your word is about to come. Your word is about to come. I say your word is about to come. Let me tell you one secret about this my father. His songs bring healing. His laughter brings healing. His testimony is he's not joking. He's shouting testimony he's telling you what is happening. I've been around. I've been around. That was the time they were building. There's no money. So we went to him. There's no money. He said, uh -huh. since there is no money in that place, now, you that is here, do you believe that God has capacity to give you money? I said, yes. He said, well, go home. The building will be completed. So I was in a back crusade. I asked money. God asked me to open the booth. Have you had that kind of thing? Has God given you money in the booth before? <laughs> okay, ask God now to bring money for you. Please, the hour has come. Shall we all stand together and welcome our father? Welcome the grandfather. Welcome the grandmaster. Welcome the tuku tuku, the reservoir of power. The organization of Nigeria, the voice of the East. Put your hands together for our father. And the happiest person shout hallelujah. I want you to tell just one person and say to him or her, whether my enemies like it or not. This year shall be my best year. Um, I want to thank the women that danced 
I think they did marvelously well. And the men that danced with them are for dancing unto the Lord. He will fill your home with oil. Only the humble can dance. The proud cannot. <laughs> David danced and God closed the wombs of his enemies. As you dance unto the Lord, all your enemies shall be in trouble. Take your seat. Um, how many of you pray for your governor? The Portacot roads have become demonic because you don't pray for your leader. We are called by God to pray for our leaders because you can't rise above your leader. We were in your traffic demonic network for hours. And I'm glad we are here now. Let's give the Lord a good clap up from somebody. Come, can someone remove this, uh, reduce this uh, AC? You know, when they call for hours, which one, which one is causing what? I am not happy that believers are living below standard. Every time I see believers I, in Nigeria, I cry. The life of poverty we live is not what the Bible promised. I have been preaching for 69 years. I have never... I have never borrowed money I never owed anybody. And I have built two hospitals without asking anybody for money. I have built a polytechnic in my village. The college I we built in Uyo has just been upgraded to the standard of a university last week. I have tied six streets in my village without asking anybody for money. I told my wife God has spoken to me to build a polytechnic without asking anybody or bank for money. She looked at me and asked me, do you really think you came to this world with your head? How can you build a 2.5 billion naira project without asking anybody for money? It is not the prayer that matters, but who is praying. Everybody prays. Even I'm robbers pray. I said to her, I start to sleep. I'm so worried about what I said. The next morning, my telephone rang. I picked it. A man said to me, seven years ago, he prayed for me and told me I'll be the seventh richest man in Nigeria. I have become one. And God asked me to give you 13 billion naira. I asked him to shut up his mouth because I saw the same vision God gave him. God did not say give Omar 13 billion. God said give Omar 1 billion. And I, God, will give him favor. Favor plus 1 billion is more than 12 billion. The man asked me to send account number where he'll pay in the money. I said to him, pay only one billion. Take back 12. 
billion. I was shocked soon after he sent how many cows? She sent 10 cows and asked me, why are you afraid of money? Much money. Hey, stop. I am from the eastern part of Nigeria. Nobody from the east is afraid of money. Or are you? My friend, my six-year-old child, a girl, came to me and said, Daddy, I want to be the captain of our school. Can you be my, my campaign manager? And give me money to buy books for my classmates, pencils for them, paint for them, and shoes for them. That way they vote for me. Look at this small girl. She said, next year, I want you to be my campaign manager. If I miss this year, next year I win. But make the money available. How, how many times has you brought the, the gift question? Two years now. Two years. Right where you are. I'm going to ask you to listen attentively and intently and earnestly. And let what I will say change where you are. Some people say Americans bring me money every week. That Bush and Obama bring all my money. That's a, a fable story. I don't discuss it. If I have a living God, I don't need any American to bring me money. Right where you are, we are going to go on a journey. But before we do, you know, Rua, I arrived to preach in Orua. Orua is only a village of 100 people. As soon as I arrived and settled down, my phone rang. Some people said they were coming to kidnap me. I replied and asked to know who they were. And asked them, is that my reward? When the federal government planned to kill all the kidnappers in by Elsa, I, I intervened. I asked the president not to do it. He sent an aircraft that took me to Bielsa and I pleaded with them to give up before they killed over nothing. So I asked them, is this my reward? They said, no, we, we didn't know you were the one coming. <laughs> Please, we will not, we will not kidnap you. The village got excited, bought me the biggest jeep I ever had that time. When they gave me the jeep, I said to God, please, turn this community into a university community. And no man be allowed to be governor of Bielsa, itself from this village. The water that won't let them drive their cars to their homes, send a European company to bridge it free of charge. Let no man be local government chairman of that area except from that village. Give them a musician who will popularize the village. How many of you know what I said have all come to pass? I don't really know who I am. <laughs> I came back from Okorete Crusade and met my wife. We were looking haggard and unhappy. Madam, what's the matter? She said, I think I have canceled the breasts. Hey, stop. There are too many things we need in this house. Not cancer of the breast. I need Range Rover Jeeps. Not cancer of the breast. So I held her hand. Did not say a word. Released my hand. And asked her to test and see if the lump is still there. 
You know what she asked me? She asked, what did you do? The lump has gone. What did you, like I, I went and ate table of talk for Juju. What do you mean by what did you do? <laughs> I simply demonstrated my anointing over you. I don't know who I am. I quarrel with the governor. And I said to the governor, in three months time, you will no more be governor. God will remove you. That weekend, God will bring two of us together to complete our argument and fight it. To my own surprise, three months after, a battle came from nowhere and sacked the brave governor. How many of you were old enough to know about uh, Bachelor's uh, Act? How many of you were around and alive? Let me see your hand raised up. Don't be afraid. When I saw the governor <laughs> in Benin, he said to me, Woman, other people use the anointing to heal the sick. You use their own to sack governors. God will punish you. What God are you referring to? That weekend, the man who paid his way to the government house lost the mother. Made me the guest speaker. Made him the guest of honor. Two of us arrived and they gave us two seats together. He said, I won't sit next to you. You're the wicked man. I, I said to him, you can go. The crowd will not miss you. Bye-bye. But that's not what I want to achieve. I want to tell you, if you're a born again child of God, I want to tell you who you are and the limitless, boundless possibilities and what this God can do for you. I quarrel with the sitting president of Nigeria and he threatened to arrest me and lock me up. He said, I will chain your legs and hands. And I said, Your Excellency, in four days' time, you will no more be president. They will chain your legs and hands. Four days, they arrested him. Don't clap, he's not my friend. He's not my friend, so we're not fighting again. Huh? I suspended the pastor in Uyo. He said, I will visit you tonight with armed robbers. Sure. My father had a neighbor who was an armed robber. We were never afraid of him. You're welcome. Come early. Come quickly. So we can finish the business of the night and go home to sleep. You know, he came with armed robbers. To my own shock and surprise, my gate became mobile. My game began to go up and come down. <laughs> He and his boys knelt down and began to beg me to beg God not to kill them. They called uh, Pastor Who? Oh, ben of Young. They called Ben of Young to beg me. He called me and asked me to pray for them and beg God not to kill them. Sure, that was the best prayer, my best prayer that year. Father, I said to God, these will be good members of my fellowship. Forgive them, don't kill them. I want them to join us and serve you. Serve them. And the revolving gate stopped. They said, Oga, okay, we are here by accident. <laughs> we were going somewhere and we missed our way and found ourselves in your house. Tell God we want to become born again. Can we turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 3? Let's take verse 13. What does he say? No, let's take verse 10. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. Say yes, ye to the righteous. Say ye to the righteous. That it shall be well with him. Everyone here that is born again. God wants me to announce to you that it shall be well with you. 
Can we run down to the book of Galatians chapter 3? Let's take 13 and 14 and 29. Write these things down. My job tonight is to set you on fire. What did I say? I want to set you on fire. Everything Satan has taken from you must be returned to you. <sighs> Already, I don't even know if you know who you are. If you can only become what God wants you to be, you will become too dangerous for anybody, any enemy to handle. Sons of native doctors in my clan were sent to kill me. When I heard it, I told my driver, park our car where they will not shoot the wrong person. He said, can't we drive back to Uyo? My friend, <laughs> a commander does not run away from the war front. Shut up your mouth. Let's show them who I am. He said, oh God, you have no value for your life. Me, I am a young father. If I die, who oh, shut up, we are talking about God sending an army of soldiers to fight for me. Stop talking about dying. He began to cry. He said, if I just reverse this car, we can drive back to you and nobody will harm you. Then we would have missed the privilege and the chance to demonstrate the power of God on behalf of the government of God. Park the car. He parked the car and I sat on top of the car. My sisters went to my wife. They went to her to allow them to evacuate my wife, my children so that those who killed me will not kill them. My wife said to them, you don't even know who my husband is. He said, brother, yeah, but you don't know him. You don't know why he's here in this village, why he was born here. You don't even know the power of God behind him. So go away, all of you. My sister shocked me when they came asking me, your wife, is she a woman? This is a mother of seven children. They're asking me if she's a woman. She must be a woman. Men and brethren, a woman who has given birth to seven children, is she a woman or a man? Say it loud, let me hear. I'll tell my sisters what you have just said. <laughs> As they were singing and coming, my brother began to cry, saying, is this how I'll die? Look at this stupid man. As they were approaching, suddenly they began to run away. They saw me. They said they saw 1,000 soldiers standing beside me. Let's go to the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 and 29. What Christ, does it say? Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. Right where you are, the Bible declares tonight that this God we serve, he has redeemed us, bought us from the market of poverty and suffering and humiliation and defeat. Hallelujah. Being made a curse for us. Being made a curse for us. For it is written. For it is written, curse is everyone that hung it on a tree. Is everyone that hung it on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might that come the on the of Gentiles. Abraham might come upon him through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Read, let's go to twenty-nine. What does it say? And if you be Christ, if you be born again, child of God, then are you Abraham's then seed? Then are you Abraham's seed? And hers according and to the promise. According, whatever God promised Abraham is yours. And let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 12. Let's take verse 2, verse 3, verse 4. Yes, sir. 
and I will make of thee a great nation. Come. Hold somebody's hand and say to him or her, God will make you the greatest son of your family. Read on, sir. And I will bless thee. God, the maker of heaven and earth, he who designed this sky without a pillar, he who made everyone here, and gave you a computer on your inside, and gave you a camera on your inside, you, you, you picture pictures and develop them within seconds. Anyone you look at now, you are going to see his or her picture. Am I correct? You won't have to snap. Just looking, you picture that person, you can describe his dress, his straps, his everything about him. Why? There's a camera on your inside. There's a machine that records everything around you. That's who you are. But he who made all these things has also made a promise Hallelujah. that he will bless you. Amen. No, tell somebody by your side, this God will bless you. Read on, sir. And I will make thy name great. He says I will make your name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Thou shall be, you cannot be a blessing unless you have surplus supplies. And by my spoken word tonight, beginning tonight, you're going to have surplus supplies. I, come, our work with God is like your work with the bank. If the bank is owing you, they will not bring the money to your house except you go to them. Therefore, go to God. Place a demand on what God has promised you. When I was a young preacher, I used to go out without food for two months, for three months, for one month, and cry to God and say, Father, if you will not anoint me sufficiently and fittingly and adequately, I would like to die. Father, I want you to so anoint me that the barren can have more children than they need. As I speak now, when, you, when a barren woman provokes me to anger, I can punish her by saying to her, every year one child, every year one child, every year. A woman said to me, you're a wicked Pastor, you know I have no child for seven years now. You have never bothered to pray for me. I'll bring food to your house. You will not even notice me. You're a wicked man. And I said to her, Madam, your punishment for insulting me shall be this. Every year, one child. Every. I know what a double member. I mean, more you, I mean, more I mean, more you, I mean, more I mean, more I 
mami muyo, mami kwe. Disappoint me. Catapult us to cloud 10 where miracles happen. Eh? The bassist, you almost got it. You missed it just by one note. Play for me. You play for me. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Tell them, them. Good. to pray for you. Can we see the book of Acts chapter 5? Let's take 16 and 17. I want to show you something you do not know. The book of Acts chapter 5 verse 16. Verse 16 and 17. Somebody help her. 15, 15 and 16. There came also a multitude. Oh, what is she? She's up. Hey, somebody asked her to sleep. Let her sleep for only three minutes. What we call a pregnant night, not sleep. Yes, sir. Act 5.15. In so much that they brought forth the sick. They brought forth the sick. Into the streets. Into the streets. And laid them on beds and, and on couches. And couches. That at the least. That at the least. The shadow of Peter passing the by. The shadow of Peter passing by. Might overshadow, might overshadow some, of them. some of them. There came also a there multitude. Came also a multitude. Out of the city. Out of about, the city. And about Jerusalem. Unto Jerusalem. Bringing sick folks. Bringing sick folks. And them which were vexed. And but them which spirits, were vexed. And they were healed, everyone. That's what we call transferable anointing. On a good day, sit down. On a good day, I can go from song to song, and everybody here will fall and sleep. But it used to frighten pastors. They asked me, what if they die? 
And then my own answer would be, what if they don't die? I was singing in a worry. A conference of 5,000 people. They fell, all of them slept off. The pastor began to cry. <laughs> and said to me, what if they die? For asking that question, you keep watch over them till tomorrow morning when they all shall wake up. Find out what God will do. Do you know, everyone that was in that conference was healed just by that one experience. This night, my big man will bear witness when I went Paul. Yes, How sir. many people did God heal in Paul? 1,500. 1,500 cancer patients without prayer. Hello. This night, I don't know why God asked me to say what I said. I said, nobody who came in here with sickness, tonight, not tomorrow, I don't know what tomorrow will be, that shall go back with that sickness. Come, I'm not doing it to impress you, no. I'm not doing it for you to clap for me, no. I'm only paying you the debt I owe you. Do you agree? No, no, no. Did you hear me? When T.L. Osborne came to Nigeria in 1974, we went to Benin to collect vehicles. I arrived with others, took my seat. Tell us one looked at me and said, my friend, well, I'll give everybody a pickup, a car, a, a generating, a film generator. I mean, a film, what do you call it? Projector. 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 But I will not give you, because the amount on you is enough to give every other person here a car, a jeep, a pickup, a film projector. So I'll give you nothing. <laughs> it helps I began to dance. You know, I told you, I told you, now you have heard it again. They will give you nothing because God gave you too, too much, too, too much attention and anointing. My brother, why are you rejoicing at my, at my misfortune? Everybody has come to collect car, cars, jeep, pick up. Why can't they give it? He laughed again and laughed and roared. Do you know, I, I left Benin without anything. So I'm here to pay you the money, the anointing I'm owing you. Do you want it? Yeah. Ah. Wow. Okay, you didn't finish that reading. There's an area I want you to read. What does it say? Verse 16. There came also no. multitude. No, 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 no. Sorry, we are back to uh, Genesis chapter 12. There's this God said something you must go home with. And he, I will bless them that bless says, thee. Anybody who blesses you, I'll bless him. No, he didn't hear. Uh, he is my witness. A man who was hopelessly and wretchedly and stupidly poor said my prayer made his friend a senator and came to me for prayer. After I prayed for him, which was casual prayer, as we speak now, do you know he has three refineries across the world? He brought me what? Range Rover. Range Rover. And two, two fifty. No, what is the cost of a Range Rover? Two hundred and fifty million. 
He brought two of them. My wife asked him, why would you spend so much money? He said, because this man has made me a rich man. Refineries in three countries of the world. Where? Cameroon, Nigeria, Scotland. and Scotland. But it is for only those who believe. And I would like you to be one of those that shall believe. Whoever greets you, heaven will greet him or her. But anybody that fights you, God will chase him to his grave. I was here in Port Harcourt, how many weeks ago? Three. A man was shouting my name. That Omar does not go about preaching, he goes about collecting money. You know, thunder came from nowhere and blew off his head from his body. <laughs> they, they, they came asking me if I knew anything about it. No, the better story is which one? The one of, uh, where was it? Dikken Afa. I was in Dikken Afa preaching. The place I stood, somebody buried Juju there. I stood on that juju and prayed for three days. Is it three or two? Three. three. Days. Then on Monday, we left. A dog came from heaven, went to where they buried the juju, brought out the juju, took it to the man who brought that juju and buried it. Knocked at his door. A dog. As he opened the door, and saw the dog and the juju, he collapsed and died. The funny thing is that the people of Deacon Alpha came looking for me. Number one, they want to know where that dog came from. Number two, where the dog went to. <laughs> Number three, why did the dog kill <laughs> I told him I don't answer every question. This type of question, I will not answer. I have he who fights for me. He can use any weapon to fight. <laughs> I don't know, and I know this I saw soldiers escort me to your hotel, presidential hotel, and took offense. And drove out and came back with his boys. As soon as, soon as he parked his car, the four tires went flat. And then rain came on him. While he was trying to change the tire, the rain was falling. <laughs> he, he got close to me and said, you're a, you're a wizard. You're a wicked man. I said, no, 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 no. It is in your Bible that when you fight me, God will fight you. Can we see the book of Isaiah chapter 54? Let's say verse 17. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Please stand up and say to two persons, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that wait, rises... Wait, 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 no, no, wait. You prophesy it over yourself. Say, no weapon sharpen against me. My brother from the same father with me took me to Omaha court and told the court that I was no longer their brother. The judge asked, which woman are we talking? He said, this woman you know. The man said to them, the Chris, mom, if you are not afraid of this man, I am afraid of him. I don't want to die now. Take the case to where he was born or half here. 
we went to Ahafia. The judge then said, since I got married three months ago, I've not enjoyed my marriage. I don't want to die now. Take the case to Aruchuku. They took the case to Aruchuku. The judge then said, since I came, I have not unpacked my briefcase. So I can't start, this, start my, my job here with this type of case. Take it to another place. They took it to a native doctor's shrine. On their way out, the leader died. They said I gave a cow for the leader to be killed. I told them I had no argument, I had nothing to say. The next morning, the, the native doctor they went to see died also. I now asked them, who brought the cow that killed the native doctor? But surprisingly, six days after, the native doctor's boys were having their lunch. They did not know the lunch was poisoned. Six of them all died. Tell people, you are now too dangerous for any enemy to handle. They should leave you alone. I, my wife and I went, was, we were invited to a home to eat. While we were eating, we found rings in the soup. I told my wife, please don't let the rings bother you. Father, let this poison make the soup more delicious in Jesus' name. As we came back, the next morning, the owner of the house came, telling me her housemate poisoned us. And I said, Madam, I am one of those that can eat poison and continue with my journey. That includes you. No, no, let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 20 through 23. I want to tell you who you are. Behold, Behold I have received commandment to bless. Every enemy that wants to attack you shall receive commandment from God to bless you. And yes, he had blessed. And God had blessed you. And I cannot reverse it. And nobody can reverse it. Verse 21. 21. He had not beheld iniquity God in Jacob. God has not seen your sins anymore because the blood of Jesus had covered your sins. Neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. Neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God. Is the Lord with him. you are God. Is with him. Is with you. And the shout of a king. And the is shout among of the them. king. What do you mean by the shout of the king? It means at the door of your house every night, God will be sitting there to wait for your enemies to come. <laughs> In 1972, I, I, I became manager of the company. And I checked into, no, they gave me a room. My neighbor, a woman, after four days, came and asked me, I, I, are you a human being? Since you came, I have not slept. I am a witch, but I don't know who you are. <laughs> and I said, if you're a witch, and you are next door to my room, pack out before you die. She said, I will. My dreams have been terrible. I can't sleep again. Are you a human being? Sometimes I think I am. Other times I think I don't know who I am. But if you're living next to my house, run. My children, when I, when I used to travel out on crusades, a woman would turn into an owl and pitch on top of our, our house. I would sing, cuckoo, one day, my boy's children said to me, that witch has returned. I came out and said to Madam, I know you. If you don't want to die, pack out tomorrow morning. Far away from this vicinity. Do you know, before 6 a.m., she had packed all her things out. 
Do I have anybody who would like to be dangerous to every enemy of yours? Wow. Okay. Okay. Let's go back. Where are we? Verse 23. Surely there is no enchantment against there Jacob. Is no, there is no poison, no charm against you anymore. Yes, sir. Neither is there any divination against Israel. Neither is there any divination against, against Israel. According to this about, time. About this time next year, it shall, it shall be, be said, said of, of you, see what God had done for you. I am not a regular preacher. I was speaking in Ahoku uh, in in, bio, in uh, Ebony 18 years ago. And I said, no, the chief asked me, how shall we know a great man of God came to our place? And I said, you know this time, time one of your sons shall become governor. And one shall become secretary to government. Five shall become commissioners. The chief said to me, you're a liar. We don't have money. <laughs> we don't have anybody to help us. This is something we cannot achieve in our lifetime. And I said to him, sir, when that time will come, this is your bachelor house shall become marble inside and marble outside. He said, he said, if the first one was a lie, this second one is a big lie. You're a big liar. Few months after Dr. Who Ebu became the governor of of Ebony. Yes, sir. Dr. Tuma, Tuma secretary became secretary to government. Four of their boys became uh, commissioners. If we invited Obasanjo to visit their state and chose the chief's house to be the place that they will entertain and receive Mr. President. They pulled down that house and rebuilt it, marble inside, marble outside. There are people who are not ordinary human beings. When I married my wife newly, she didn't know me very well. I came home one day, she was carrying a, a cup of food drink. And I said to her, Madam, throw away that food drink. She asked me why. I said, throw it away. She said, you go about acting like you are superior to everybody. If you are born again, I'm born again. If you have anointing, I have anointing. Madam, if you drink that thing, the baby in your womb will jump out today. She said, okay, let it happen. She emptied the cup. Midnight, she began to bleed. The baby was ready to jump out. She asked me to pray for her. Madam, how can I pray? Two of us, we want to know who has the anointing. <laughs> I called her brother, a bishop, who took her to the hospital. 4 a.m., the nurses came, calling me to go back with them and see my wife. She was about to die. Die? She said, they said yes. Father, I thought I was joking. Please. God said, go there. Whatever he asked me to do, I'll do it. I got there. Asked Dr. Moran, can I stop the bleeding? He said, whatever you can do to help us. So I said to the world, thou blood. The nurses began to laugh. He is calling on the blood as though the blood is a human being. But the bleeding stopped. Let's 
go to the book of Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 11, verse 3. Every plan of God has a foundation. Every plan of God. If God will prosper you, there is a condition, there is a foundation. And I want you to hear that foundation and understand it, that you may stop living a life of poverty. Jesus had already died for the cross of the law upon you. He had died for your poverty. You can therefore not continue to live a life of poverty. This night, I declare it your night of new beginning. Yeah. Don't ask me how will God do it. I don't know. My cousin was married to a smashingly, gorgeously, mesmerizingly, bewitchingly pretty girl. But he was poor. The girl called him and said, when, when army officers see me, they pack their cars and hug me. You, you can't take care of me. He sat, he sat my brother. My brother called me and said, brother, I'm in trouble. My wife had just left me because of poverty. And I said to him, I pray for you now. The God that preach is the God of prosperity. He's going to prosper you beyond your own imagination. He asked me, how? How do I know? God has 250 ways of solving one problem. I don't know the one he will use. Then after my prayer that day for him, the next day, he was on his first part driving through Gabon, where they lived. The president of Gabon saw him and stopped him and asked him, who fixed who fix these lamps onto your Vespa? He said, I did. And the president said, for having the creativity, the imagination, the wisdom to fix these lamps, you will now lead my convoy as the president of Gabon. When you lead, we will follow you. <laughs> there is somebody here tonight that God will give that favor does it really make sense a young poor Nigerian was on <laughs> was on his best path and the president saw him and chose him to lead his escorts from that day henceforth. My brother said to him, I am not educated. And the president said, forget about education. I just want to know who fixed these lamps. My brother said, I went to no school, but I have great intelligence. And the president said, that's why I'm looking for you. I want you to go with me now to have lunch so I get to know you more. My brother said, I'm not well dressed. The president said to him, we are not going on any uh, fashion parade. We just want to know you. Men and brethren, my brother saved the president only for one month and bought a car. The car they used to call Avenger. Chrysler Avenger. He called me and said, I am not worthy to drive this car. I'll bring it to you in New York give it to you as a gift. Whatever God put in your mouth, let it continue. It has given me a brand new car. <laughs> Jesus said, the year my meal. I'm a man, man, this song, I ain't a I can't know. Any young I came you. I mean, my Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am a man. I mean, my man, this song, I yeah, yeah. I can't enough. Any young I came, you. I mean, my man, this song, I yeah, yeah. Jesus said, I am a man. I mean, my man, this song, I yeah, yeah. 
Jesus, any your mamu, I got me so good as soon as I got. Oh, the image, image of Robu, I got me so good as I got. Jesus, say the mamu, oh, I mean mamu, this ang ayeng. greatest thing that can happen to you. You'll be partnering with God and this God will anoint you and bless you. He will run a school for you. He will bless you with wisdom. Wisdom is the mother of prosperity. But sin is the mother of poverty. Let's go on to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Yes. Having this seal, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. The Lord knoweth those who are his own. And let everyone that nameth the name everyone of Christ. Everyone that names the name of Christ depart, depart from, from iniquity. iniquity. That's the foundation for prosperity. Once you begin to live a Christian holy life, whatever others are looking for shall come looking for you. My 1978, my mother invited my wife and I to our village. She said to me, I saw you on television. You were talking and preaching and smiling like a Cheshire cat. You were sounding like a rich man. People don't know you are hopelessly and wretchedly poor. Ma, what do you want? She said, I want you to build a house in our village. You don't have a house. 
Thank you. Tomorrow, tonight I'll tell God what you said. Tomorrow I'll bring the money. She asked me, don't like that. <laughs> Your son has relationship with the maker of heaven and earth. If you are born again here tonight, you have a relationship with the maker of heaven and earth. And this God can do anything for you. My wife and I went home that night and prayed. I was shocked the next morning by 5 a.m. An elder of apostolic church was already at our door with a bag of money. He said he was sleeping. God woke him up and gave him my name, my address and asked him to carry money to me. Me? He said yes. I prayed for him. My wife and I will leave for the village. Gave the money to my mother to count. She counted the money, counted the money and said to me, old boy, this money cannot build the type of house I want you to build. Go back. Tell God, that God, that the money he gave you was not enough. She gave you more. My wife asked her, what did you say? <laughs> she said, tell your God. That money he gave your husband is not enough. Right where you are this night, I want God to bring you to a place where you cry tonight. I'm going to answer tomorrow morning. Yeah. Being a born again child of God means you're partnering with God through life. What you don't have, you ask him to search heaven and see if those things can be found. Ten years ago, my chief of staff is my witness. I went to see, I over exhausted myself. I went to see my doctor. My doctor saw me and began to cry. He collapsed and began to weep. That is, and then, my friend, what's wrong with your head? He said to me, Daddy, sorry, you have only one more hour to live. You will die in one hour's time. My friend, shut up your stupid mouth. The craze. People like me can't die like ordinary men. While we were talking, my wife called the governor that ran for a flight to take me out of Nigeria. I said to my wife, if I have only one hour to leave, and you're flying me out of Nigeria to London, it means I've died six times before I reach London. You're the, the craze woman. She asked me, can anything ever rattle you? Well, it depends on what you're talking about. But in two days' time, I shall be back. Keep food for me. She asked me, are you really a human being? They're saying, doctors are saying you will soon die. We are talking about food after two days. She said to me, the grace. Well, madam, I don't know if you know, grace people make God happy. They can dance along the road without any music. Could that be so? <laughs> By my spoken word tonight, this whole life is going to change. But you must live a life of holiness. You must, you must live the life of holiness. So my wife and I will return back to, the, to Uyo and told God what my mother said. Men and brethren, I was shocked out of my socks when the next day the same man came back with more money than he came before. We took this money to my mother. She counted it and counted it and, and she asked me, 
did you really say you're a preacher or you are an arm robber? Where did you get such money? She said, I'm your mother. I've never seen such money before. Where do you get such money? Ma, <laughs> let's not discuss it. There are too many things I do not understand about God. How many of you understand how your car works? How many of you do? You know how your car mixes fuel with oil? Do you? No. But will you not drive your car again? No, you'll drive it. Whether you understand how God works or not, this night I'm here to make sure you are blessed by this God beyond your knowledge. When my cousin brought that car, he bought newly. I drove the car to my village. My mother said, I didn't know preachers could buy a brand new car. I need money for my business. If you can buy this type of car, you can also help me financially. I asked her how much she wanted. She told me. I said to her, tomorrow morning, come, there'll be money for you. I didn't know how the money was going to come. But... That morning, my, my secretary at the phone came to work and saw a large, big bag of money written for mass use. She ran to me and said, Sir, sir, I am not a thief. This money was not here yesterday. I don't know how the money came. Hey, my friend, stop making noise. My mother wants that money. Bring it. <laughs> When I gave it to my mother, she shocked me when she asked me, do you know I don't know who you are? You don't know who I am? She said, yes. Why? <laughs> she said, the things you are doing recently. <laughs> I don't understand again. You had no money yesterday, today you have surplus money. Did you steal it? Ma, stop talking about stealing. The God I serve sent his boys to Oron River to collect money from the first fish that will arrive. And the money will be enough to pay their tax. Did, did, did they find money? Tell me, did Peter find money? Say it well, did Peter find money? Is, is there any other person that God's that kind of miracle. No. This night I declare the blessings of God shall baffle the world around you. We have not just come to give up our sins without reward. We have come that God may turn our lamentation into laughter. And turn our disgrace into grace. And turn our disappointment into supernatural appointments. But how many of you are ready for the impossible? If you are ready, raise up your hand. Father, all those who have raised up their hands today, may the blessing of faith be given to them. Please take your seat. Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 11. We'll take verse, verse 11, verse, no, verse 22, 23, 24. I'm going to shock you. I'll surprise you now. Yes, sir, what does it say? Mark eleven twenty three. For verily I say unto you, Verily I say unto you, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what if you can say to any problem you have, which is the mountain, be thou removed, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, be thou cast into the and sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things but which shall he said those things which shall you, come you, to pass, you have said, shall come to shall pass, come to pass, he shall have whatsoever you he have said, what things soever you say it to that thing. I came home one day. 
And my doctors, I was sick. My doctors came and said I had, no, my neck bone has shifted and I should come for surgery to restore the, the bone. And I said, no, that was to call option one. Option two, that I shall lay my hand on my neck and command the bone to, roll, to go back to eat a same place. Right where you're sitting tonight, you're a miracle worker. I laid my hand on that bone and said to the bone, my friend, return to your assigned place. Stop going up and down. You are not a truck pusher. The doctors asked me, what do we do? I said, go home. Tomorrow, come back. Let's see what God had done. They came back, the bone had returned to its place. But great things will begin to happen in your life if you can step out of sin. Can we, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 3. I don't know where the verse is, where where Adam said to God, when I heard your voice, verse nine. I was afraid. Verse 9. Verse 9. What and happened? Lord, and the Lord God called unto, unto Adam. Yes. And said unto him, and said unto where him, art thou? Where art thou? And he said, verse and 10, he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. When I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid. I was afraid. Because I was naked. Because I was naked. And I hid myself. Men and brethren, the first, the first punishment for sin is nakedness. Nakedness represents poverty. If you are going to live for God, you no longer live a life of poverty. You will live a strong life. Your faith will increase. You can do many and great and mighty things. Read on, sir. Verse. The next verse. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Yes. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee not that thou shouldest eat and the man said the woman whom thou gavest me gavest to be with me she gave me of the tree and I did eat when, when your knowledge of the principles of the Bible are not clear and known to you you are going to live a life of poverty and struggling and sickness and failure Jesus never sinned, so he never lacked. I want you to step out of any sin you are involved in and say to God, help me to live for you. This night, I want to declare it your night of new beginning. Your night of new beginning. Read on. Verse 14. And the man and the man said, no, verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. Verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all Thou cattle, art cursed. And above every beast of the field. When you give your life to Christ, that curse shall be broken. It shall be broken. It shall be broken. And already it is being broken. Father, move from person to person. 
where there is sickness, where there is lack, where there is struggling, take it away. Father, move from person to person. Let your healing anointing come upon your children. Let them be set free from every form of curse. Let them enjoy their walk with you. No sickness shall find a place anymore in the lives of your children. Father, bless them. Honor them. Let the miracle begin now. For I ask in Jesus' name. I want you to search and find out if God has healed you, come up to this altar. I will pray that that sickness will not return. It shall never, never return. You begin a new life tonight. Your sleep shall not even be an ordinary sleep. It shall be healing sleep. A sitting governor called me and said, Oh man, I have told my wife how to take care of my things. I am about to die. I have not slept for eight weeks. And I said, Your Excellency, there's a new anointing in the air. We call it healing sleep. You are going to sleep for two days without waking up. He said, Oh God, I can't sleep. Hey, stop. I am talking. What did you call me? You call me because there are things I know you don't know. There is new anointing in the air known as healing sleep. You are going to sleep like a pregnant night nurse. <laughs> he said, when he heard me laugh, he drifted away in a profound sleep. You know, he slept for two days. Woke up. COVID-19 had disappeared. He drove to my house and said, um, this is not a telephone business. I want to tell you face to face what God had done for me. Right where you are standing or sitting, a miracle had taken place already. If you have noticed your own, come to the altar. I'm going to ask God to make this healing permanent. And you are going to start a new life. A life of good health. A life of prosperity and promotion. A life of great and wonderful health. Every sickness they say cannot be healed. Your body shall be healed. If you are coming, come quickly to the altar. Let me pray for you. Yes, everybody check. If God has remembered you this night, come to the altar. Don't waste my time. Come quickly, come quickly. Amana. Eye na base amana pai. Amana. Eye na base amana sosongo. Amana. Eye na basi amanam aye amanam Eye na basi amanam so so Oh amanam o amanam o amanam o amanam o so so Amanam o amanam Eye na basi amanam so so Oh amanam o amanam o Eye na basi amanam so so
Amana, 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 to doubt is to doubt your doubt. There are 20 people who are struggling with unbelief, not knowing that that God who promised is faithful to keep his promise. Therefore, 20 of you, um, if you refuse to acknowledge what God had done for you, it shall become a curse for you. You will not like it. In 1990, I had a program in Abraba. They gave me a helicopter to use six hours a day. I said to God, what would you do? He said, I will heal the blind without prayer. When we counted, there were about 25 who were healed. One girl said she was healed. Let her change her mind. She said, I'm not sure what happened. Madam, you have told her that you knew you had recovered your sight. She said, I was afraid it may come back. That's why I told her lie. I said, sorry, I will never pray for you again. My anointing at the time I prayed for you was anointed, anointing for healing. But now you are talking to me. The anointing I have is for food. I want to go and eat. <laughs> Do you know, as I speak, that blindness remained. I don't want that to happen to you. Twenty of you, God has touched and healed. You are still standing there. Come down and join others. And I'll pray for all of you. You will not be the same again. Even this night, your sleep shall be healing sleep. What do I mean by healing sleep? You are going to enjoy your sleep like a pregnant night nurse. Wow. <laughs> a woman fell under the anointing in my office and slept off. When I tried to wake her up, she said, don't wake me up. I've never had this type of sleep before. I want to continue to sleep in your office. Madam, this is not your house. Get up. Yes, there are 20 people I said God had healed, but who are afraid to admit it. If you are one of them, come, that punishment may not That's come up 23, sir, you. coming. 24, 25, 26. Oh, 25, 26. 27. Wow. Awesome God. Father, all those who have stepped out to give glory to your name, shall not only have a miracle this night, they have a miracle every day of their lives. I declare you their doctor. You are now their doctor. Whatever sickness has a name, they are going to heal that sickness. Father, on the cross of Calvary, Jesus said, it is finished. There is no sickness left again. Your people shall now enjoy good health and good life and great life. Father, grant them peace on every side. Father, wherever they live, there shall be harmony there. There shall be song and dance. 
They will live a holy life. Nobody will lure them into sin. They will step out of poverty and step into plenty. Whatever they lay their hand to do shall prosper. Don't let them speak foolish things. Don't let any one of them say, I have no one to help me. For you are their helper. Again, teach them how to be grateful to you. Father, this night is the night of new beginning. As they go home from here, bless them with happiness, with joy, with excitement. They will not save you without being happy. As they walk in here any day and every day, may their joy be great. May it be great. May it be great. Father, you are wonderful and marvelous. I declare everyone who has accepted your healing to have had that healing. And they will enjoy it. They will walk in it. They will live in it. They are no longer ordinary people. Heaven shall monitor their lives and they shall be happy every day of their lives. It shall be so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Madam with walking stick, can you stand up? I want to see you move without any walking stick from here to this place and back. Forget you were not able to walk. Wait, 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 wait. Relax. You don't look sick. You look even younger. You look strong. That voice that says you can't walk. You can't walk again. It's a lie. You can walk again. And you're going to walk now before me. Don't let that voice continue to speak to you. Looking at you, you look so fresh like a young girl. Are you ready? Huh? Please promise me you'll forget they told you can't walk because you can walk. I want you to walk up here, not far, just here, and then come back, and then do good. Take it small. Don't, don't rush. Why is this organ so long? Good. Go on. Don't worry. Somebody cheer her up. Go. Good. Go. Go. Don't take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Go on. Stop there. Take time. Put back her seat. Is she your mother? What is her child? Why did you stay away from her? My friend, come here and help her be her nurse. That's why you were born. No wonder you're not a nurse. Stand behind her. I didn't say, look at this woman. Are you a Nigerian? No, I'm not sure. Madam, your daughter is behind you. Relax. You already you have done well. Do you know you walked from here to this place? You can do it again. And tonight, while you sleep, the angels of God will massage your legs. Come, I'm asking myself, why did I pick you? There are others behind you. Why did I pick you? Because today is your day. I want you to walk back to this seat. Go back. 
my well, go on. Good. Go on. 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 Do you know what you did now? You got there and you stood up. You were not looking for that chair. You stood up on your own. Beginning tonight, your strength will grow. Never you say again, I have no one to help me. The Lord, our God, is your helper. Take your seat. Sit down. Help her to sit down. Are you the first daughter? Huh? Number, number two. Uh, you were born to take care of your mother. And stop acting like a Nigerian. Take care of your mother. When my mother was alive for 30 years, I gave her 25,000 a week. A bag of rice a week. A bag of beans a week. The day, the week she was to die, she said to me, having taken good care of me for 30 years, my prayer will bring the money for my burial. You will not touch your own money. Do you know that simple statement shocked me? People, governors would drive to my house and bring out 10 million. Total amount they gave me was 70 million. I thought of what to do. I just said, let me do something unusual. Every arm robber in my clan, I will kill 10 goats, I mean 10 cows for you a week. Come and rejoice, but you must repent. Do you know they came in large number? I'm robbers. <laughs> Love your mother. Take care of her. Are you in the same house with her? No. She lives alone? Huh? You have an elder sister. Two of you take care of her. She look young, too young to be old. Huh? Make her happy. You need her. Unfortunately, there's no other mother for you but this one. So make her look young again. Already she's looking younger. Come on, give God a good clap of faith. Is there anybody who is happy tonight? You're happy to see what God has done. Raise your hand and shout hallelujah. Let me hear. Hallelujah. Tomorrow we're going to give special offering. Every family bring out your best offering tomorrow and write down five things you want God to do for you. One of the things I want God to do for you is to ask your children to take care of you. How many of you like it? You like your children to take care of you. Let me see your hand raised up. Wow. Do you know I built a nine-bedroom flat for my mother? I bought her farmland. I told her I will so spoil you, you will not like to go to heaven. <laughs> You'll be here with me. <laughs> take care of your mother. You never have another mother again. Tomorrow, this night, take time. Call your family members. Decide on what offering to give to God. Give God. Can we see First Kings, chapter three, verse three, four, five? And Solomon loved the Lord. How many of you love God? Let me see your hand raised. You love God. I want you to love God. Walking in the status of David, his father. Yes. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Yes. Verse 4. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. 
Yes. A thousand burnt offerings. He brought one thousand burnt offerings. Did Solomon offer upon that altar? Yes. Verse five. In Gibeon. In Gibeon. The Lord appeared to Solomon. God in a dream left, by night. God left what we're doing at night and came to him. And God. I want you to give an offering that will make God visit you and pronounce blessings upon you. I want God to bless your child, bless your family. I want God to, whatever is missing in your family, it shall be supplied. If no great man has ever been born into your family, it shall not be born into your family. There's an offering you give to God, he will not sleep. He will come looking for you. That's what I want you to do. Show him you love him. Show him you care. Because only he can cancel your premature death. Only he can heal you. Only he can give you more money than you can spend. Beginning tonight, your life will change. What you were looking for shall now come looking for you. So tomorrow, bring the best offering you can afford and then ask your children to help you write down five things God must do for you this year. Come, this Christmas shall not be ordinary Christmas. Plan it. Pray for it. It must happen. You will start your Christmas with surplus supplies of money. Wow. This Christmas, you will come home healthy and strong. Yeah. This Christmas, you are going to dance and dance for God. Yeah. Money will come from the four corners of the world. Yeah. I declare, you will beg for money no more. Yeah. You will borrow no more. Yeah. Destiny helper shall not be sent to help you. Wow. And I'm going to ask God to teach you how to laugh like a Cheshire cat. No, how to laugh like a locomotive engine. That is, my mother used to laugh like that in her old age, 96. She will laugh in our house. People along the road will hear her. I, Madam, can you know why your voice? She said, no, I want my enemies to know I'm still here. <laughs> You will take over from my mother. Your laughter will make your enemies angry. But they can't change anything. Raise your hand. Thank the Lord. Bless him for blessing you. Please stop saying I am unlucky. You are not unlucky. You are blessed by God. You remain blessed by God. Are you putting your beautiful hands together for the Lord? Please get seated. Get seated. Please get seated one minute. Put your beautiful hands together for the Lord. Please get seated. Get seated. Get seated. In the next five minutes, we are going to be off from here. Ushers, please share what we have. We just have a cup of water for you. Make sure you pick it. Please get seated. Get seated. We just have a cup of water for you. Ushers, ushers, elders, please. Um, I mean, deacon and deaconesses, please just help. Let me give you one instruction. Let me give you one instruction. This night, let's take 30 minutes and pray for God's servant. Tomorrow, I assure you, you are going to see the power. Is going to go and rest. Tomorrow I assure you, you are going to see the hand of God. 
that difference between power and authority it's not in the realm of power it's in the realm of authority all the days from Sunday 19th we have been seeing power but from Saturday and Sunday the last day what is just authority and I'm praying that every one of you that is in this service are calling on the God of Reverend Dr. Mokbai all that he has said will surely come to pass by tomorrow the man that shout that amen, you will receive your miracle by tomorrow. Every word he has spoken, I stand as a bona fide son to decree his word will never fall to the ground. If I hear you are amen, the word shall be answered. Your word shall come to pass. I am also one that have enjoyed this grace. And I stand here to decree by the grace of the God of my Father, by this time tomorrow, answer shall be delivered to you. I don't like your amen, the Lord is amen. You will have a quick answer. Your affliction shall be caused. Your blessing shall be released instantly. As you shout that amen, may your blessing be released. May your blessing be released. Everyone that shout that amen, Whatever you have said, jokingly or casually, it shall surely come to pass. I had three things. Say, this year shall be the best year. From his declaration as you go, this year surely shall be the best year for you. Lift your hands. I know that man that is standing here Every word from his mouth is like a law. I pray again, this year shall be the best year for you. Shut your hand. This year shall be the best year for you. God will change your story from tonight. You are going to join us in this program. I pray that God of Reverend Dr. Mokpai, that God of Antioch, that God of Bande, that God of Apostle Blessed Governor Panigo, that God that I serve, I pray in the name of Jesus, you are tired by this time tomorrow at the Lord Levite. Wake up with your own miracle. Wake up with your own testimony. Wake up with an answer in your hands. I say you are your amen. My God shall surely answer you. My God shall surely reward you. My God shall surely promote you. Listen to me. I'm one of the people that enjoy the grace of the fathers. That's a mandate in my life. And I stand on that mandate. He said, whatever I cause is cause. Whosoever I bless is blessed. I stand here today to decree everyone that wants you dead shall die tonight. As I hear you are loud, amen. Everyone that wants you are down for my God, the God of Reverend Dr. Mokbai, shall pull them down. Whatever belongs to you, like a blessing, which you are loud, amen, is releasing that. Is releasing starting. Go with your blessing. Return with your testimony. Go with your blessing. Return with your answer. Go with your healing. In the name of Jesus. What others struggle to get. What others are bribing to get from this program that God that blessed and raised Joseph that one that shall the Lord say amen that God shall surely visit you tonight that sickness is not going back with you that problem is not going back with you so shall it be for you 
In Jesus' precious name. Lift your hands up and magnify the Father God. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you this. I sincerely want to appreciate you for being calm before the Father. He will call me tonight that your people behave very well. Praise the Lord. We have three sections tomorrow. The first section is an anointing section by 7 a.m. 7 a.m. It's the last lap tomorrow. You want to sleep in church? Sleep in church. Finish this program. I know you're a big bishop, but finish this program for the Father's blessing. The first section is 7 a.m. and anointing service. We are going to be carrying that nine things to pray for. The second section is by 8.30. It's a communal service. It's a communal service. So we have the anointing by 7 a.m. to 8.15. Then we have the communal from 8.30 to 9.45. Then from 10, the Thanksgiving service. Those of you carrying your children, our father is here. That service will start. And that service, the father's blessing. The father's blessing. The father's blessing. The father's blessing. So we take 30 minutes to dedicate those children and then like we are discussing with Joe that he will rest and be here early. So we expect him just to be here and pick up the microphone and to be that blessing. And he has instructed that five things be written. Every blessing requests a sacrifice. There is an offering for the family. Please speak it. Willingly, not forcefully. Just tonight, pick that sacrifice. But eventually, you are here, you are not giving that sacrifice that Reverend, Reverend Ntia Aintia gave immediately after this service. Just come and drop it on the altar. If you are carrying your own cash, if you are, want to make a transfer, can, is that account displayed? Can you display the resident person? Please, that money does not go to church. I told you already. That's why it's going to resident pastor. Please, is it, is it pseudo? Did they give you the account? Why? Please, the resident pastor, ask for the resident pastor. It's going to, please come this way. Come this way. Come this way. Please, that money does not go to church church account. Please, if you make a vow and you want to transfer, Reverend Antia, Antia, please meet with the resident pastor. Get his account and then you drop it there. They will transfer it straight to Reverend Antia. If you are carrying a sacrifice, come and drop it or you see Pastor Zachariah there. See Pastor Zachariah there. Pastor Zachariah, come out, my friend. Is it this new suit you bought or coat? Praise the Lord. Well, amen. There is something. Please pray for me. I sense in my spirit that in few coming years, Baba will not be going about. I saw it. But you see this grace, it will not die with this grace. That grace is carrying, it will not die with it. There are so many of us that will get that grace. So you have the cash you can give to this man. You have the account you give to this man. So that if this one disappears, I can have this one to collect. In case this one says he didn't receive anything, I can meet this one. Anyhow, Reverend Tia must have something. Please put your happy two hands together for them. Hallelujah. 7 a.m. Please, we have coastal buses. Don't be scared. Buses that will carry you. But eventually you are going far. Remember tomorrow the anointing service come with that nine things. Then communion service come with that five things. And by the third service we are going to lay it to all of them and heaven shall bless you. Go and return with the answer. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord.
forever. Shalom. God bless you. See you tomorrow.